Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper in Charlton, Massachusetts. And what you're looking at here is a 1948 Porsche Gmund SL Coupe. It's, of course, not the car, but it's the shape of the car. And it was made by a student of mine who took my class in last February. And uh, he was inspired by the class and decided, and he was a Porsche mechanic early on in his life. And uh, I have another uh, student, extended learning student, Ken, who's building the same car, a Gamun Porsche, one of the first 67 Porsches ever made. And Ken's taken a different tack. He's building the chassis, which is all made with 18 gauge sheet metal all bent up. And Spencer wanted to make the body first. You can do it either way. So uh, Spencer's approach was he, at the class, he saw the advantages and disadvantages uh, of maybe a wire form and the disadvantages is how do you make the wire form that's one of the big problems that everybody uh, wrestles with is okay I understand the wire form but how do you bend the wires to make it look like a Porsche so he was a little intimidated by that and um, he was more into the technology the CAD files and and uh, maybe even scanning well, you can't scan a Porsche, Gamun Porsche, because there's so few of them available. So you have to rely on photographs to gather information to be, re, reproduce that shape. Or in his case, there's a, a, a CAD file uh, distributor uh, out of Ukraine. I believe it's the Ukraine. It's called Humster 3D. And they've been in business for uh, quite a while. And they have quite a library of various cars. And it just so happened that they had uh, what Spencer was looking for, bought the file. They're pretty inexpensive. Uh, they will do the slicing of the file, too. So it's a 3D CAD file. comes in a whole bunch of different formats. Spencer was um, uh, knowledgeable in Adobe Illustrator, which will uh, export a DXF file, is what you need to do, use a CNC router. And he also knew a little bit of Rhino. So between the Rhino and the Adobe Illustrator, he took the file that he bought from Humpster 3D. He massaged it in a few places. Sometimes when you buy these files online, they might not be perfect. But uh, to be able to scan a car and to get that perfect and everything can be a super expensive uh, proposition. So this looks really good. It can be off. Every one of these files that you buy are generally going to be off a certain percentage somewhere. Even the original cars, you might have a half an inch difference between the left and right because they were handmade and they were made uh, in a hurried fashion. Not like you do today. Today this could be a two to five year project to make this car. And uh, you can't buy this car. It's uh, super prohibitively expensive if you wanted one, and the people that own them don't want to sell them anyways. So if you want a Gamun Porsche, you have to make it. Now the original one would have 18 gauge sheet metal chassis. Uh, Spencer has opted to do a tube frame in this with probably updated suspension bits, and he hasn't decided which motor he's going to put in it yet, but you've got a, a multitude of uh, Volkswagen and Porsche motors you can use. Uh, you can even make it electric if you want it. It's all your, your potential. So, he, he bought the file, he massaged the file a little bit, he tuned it, observed all these pitches, and uh, he came up with the idea of, of putting it together. It's a, a, a pretty much a, a common idea where you have to have a link for all of these stations. So he, he has a two by two square hole or two and a half by two and a half square hole here where the tubing will go in and unites all the different uh, MDF segments. He used MDF and you ask uh, why MDF? Well MDF is very inexpensive, it's really flat, readily available, and it cuts on a rotor very, very nicely. Uh, where he lives in Maryland there was uh, one of those makers paste places, I guess they call them, where you can go in for a certain fee for a month and you can use all the equipment. They have, generally have some uh, machining equipment and some woodworking equipment. They had a CNC router. It's not that big a deal to learn how to run a CNC router. So he routed this all out himself. Now, at my class, 
he heard me speak of the advantages of a wire form, which is the viewability and clampability uh, over a, a traditional station buck, a wood station buck, which has very little clampability unless you make it. And that's what he attempted to do here by cutting out all these reliefs. And uh, without those reliefs, you have very little to, ability to clamp it. And that's one of the big problems that beginners face if they, they think they need a wood buck and, and they get this station buck with these really closely spaced stations and then you're trying to fit to it. You can't clamp to it, you can't see it, and that increases the mystery of why is this so difficult to learn. A wire form allows you to easily clamp and easily view and it's a lot easier to fit panels to it. But the problem with the wire form, as I reiterate here, is it's hard to generate the shape properly. Um, I have a method, and I'm going to show that on uh, my packet wire form. And Spencer opted to do this MDF, which gives him the shape really quick because he bought the file, he routed it, put it together with this common uniting uh, piece of steel tubing that unites all the sections and now he has an instant Gamun Porsche. Well, in the process of making the file or adjusting the file, he also made these little reliefs that he could incorporate wires in it too. He saw the advantage of the wires. It, it fills in a lot of the spots that a station buck doesn't uh, include. So that gave him a whole nother layer of information, such as where the headlights are and everything else and the windshield detail and he prop he didn't fully detail this all out which is what he's going to do now is he's going to add a lot more wire detail to the buck to make it a lot more user friendly but uh, this is a really valid way uh, especially for somebody who's doing it the first time to buy a file find one of those makers place with a router if you can get somebody to help you with the creating the DXF files or learning uh, Adobe Illustrator and doing it yourself or whatever, um, then you could generate this shape, whatever it wants, whatever you want to make, whatever is available online of these pre-made um, scans and, and files for these CAD models. So that eliminates the possibility or the, or the difficulty rather of creating the shape. So he has the shape, he's added these wires, he's come back to my class to make a bunch of panels. We started on the back and in the process of making the panels he saw the deficiencies that he has. There's still more detail that needs to be put in. And the detail is like all the landing areas for the glass uh, and it needs to be reinforced. This isn't strong enough. I'll contrast this with, with my, my wire forms that we did on the packet. So this is a good method for anybody that wants to learn, buy the file, make the wire form, and even better, because this restricted our, our viewing of how to fit the panels, get the wire form all strengthened up really strong and then you can design these pieces to either be unbolted, so you design them so you can collapse them and take them out later if you wanted to, or jigsaw them and take them right out of the way. And then you end up with a very strong wire form with no restriction of the MDF in the way, which proved to be a problem when Spencer was uh, fitting the panels. Even though he made innumerable cutouts here, it was difficult to clamp to and it was difficult still to, to be able to view to see how those panels were fitting. And it's very fragile now because you cut it away so much. Um, the MDF is a really good material to use to generate the shape fast. And also if you're going to cut it out, it's easy to cut out. So after you've made the wire form. So I think this is a really good method. And on the back here, you can see the beauty of this shape. And Spence has been 
here at the class and he's been strengthening a lot of this wire for me, put in a lot of these strengthening elements, which now he's going back to his home shop and he's going to continue strengthen this and he's going to end up with a really, really nice buck. Uh, it'll be a beautiful wire form and if he wants to he can cut these out and that's going to increase the user friendliness of the piece. So you still got a lot of work cut out. <laughs> like for instance the back engine lid. It will have to fold in the panels going up to where the gap is. They have to fold in so that hasn't been defined yet. So that has to all be defined with wires very easy to do with wires, very difficult to do with the MDF or from the file. That's going to have to be done uh, mostly from pictures, a little bit from the file. And he'll have to do the seat for the windows, he'll have to do all the openings for the doors, and when he gets it done right, you put these little loops in and you'll be able to put the panel on with the flange and it fits right tight right to where it's supposed to be and you'll have this perfect flowing surface. So overall, um, I recommend this as a really good way for beginners to develop a shape and I'm going to contrast it with the packet uh, experience uh, with the, the wire form we made on the packet which is probably the most complicated one we've done. So I just want to say that Spencer did a great job. He's coming back again. He's going to do a few more panels, and uh, it was great having him up here. And I invite anybody that wants to do a car like that to take advantage of the opportunity and uh, sign up for a class at Pro Shaper.